Hello everyone and welcome to my big Walt Disney World Q&A. I'm going to talk you through everything that you asked me on Instagram. I'm going to do my best to run through all the questions but if you're new here, hello my name is Brogan and I make Disney home lifestyle and travel vlogs here on this channel so please do hit subscribe and if you haven't watched our Walt Disney World vlog series yet then I will leave that link below and at the end. I have also done quite a few videos surrounding booking and planning. I have a whole video on booking a Walt Disney World trip and a dining tips video so I'll leave all that below for you as well but as a recap if you are new we went out to Walt Disney World my fiance Benji and I for 12 days at the beginning of December we stayed at Pop Century and we had the most amazing time so like I said if you want to go check out our whole trip you can watch the vlogs but without further ado let's get into the Q&A because I think it's gonna be a long one what was the most memorable part of your trip so there were loads of memorable moments and I did write down a few. For example, I loved eating our cheeseburger spring rolls on the Grass Hub in Magic Kingdom. I loved watching all the shows, especially crying in the shows and holding Benji's hand and singing our favourite song before Fantasmic. I loved doing the new rides together at Universal Studios. I really loved Cirque du Soleil and all the shows we got to do especially the Christmas party as well that was such a highlight being at Disney at Christmas time was such a memorable experience and the character breakfast we did at Topolino's Terrace was another really memorable moment but there were so many sometimes for me when I look back at the trip it's those journeys on the Skyliner it's the laying in bed in the morning and not feeling like rushed to go and do things. We took this trip very much at our own pace and we knew that we wouldn't be able to do everything and it wasn't our first time so we did the trip differently and I loved it in that respect because it was very much a lot of like resort hopping and um, walking at our own leisurely time and mooching in the shops and you know buying all the lovely pins we picked up and found and it was just so memorable for that reason that we just did it our way and i loved it is the magic still there i'm gonna tell you something this was one of my most asked questions and i'm pleased to tell you that yes of course the magic is still there i think when you're at home and you're reading all the articles and reports and the news and the press and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad it can be quite hard to vision what your trip is going to look and feel like and i think everyone has different experiences especially if you've got kids or you're going as a big family like you can watch as many vlogs as you like but your disney experience is going to be different and the magic doesn't go away. The minute you step into the parks and you're on Disney property, there is this feeling of being in the Disney bubble that I cannot explain and that will never be burst for me. Even when there's pros and cons and highs and lows and you know teething issues, which happens everywhere on every trip I've done over the last year or since the pandemic and since we've been able to travel again, I still think the magic is very much there because the cast members work so hard to keep the magic alive, you know? Like, even the smells, the sounds, the music, the little shows, the character interactions, like, there's just so many reasons why Disney still feels magical. But for anyone that's worried or you have a trip coming up, you're gonna have an amazing time. And I think now is actually the best time to be on Taught Disney World with all the new things that are coming. Happily Ever After fireworks coming back, which are the best. We've got Tron opening this year. We've got the Tiana re-theme on Splash Mountain. There's so many things to look forward to and enjoy. And I really loved our trip. I really did love it. I will talk about the pros and cons because I know some of you want to know. We may as well go on to that actually because one of the questions was what did live up to your expectations and vice versa. So I'll start with the cons because I had quite a few cons I wrote down and in all honesty some of them did feel a little petty or maybe just me being critical because the trip was expensive and I will have a section on budgeting so keep watching I'm going to tell you the cost and breakdown of how much everything costs but I think when you are paying a lot of money for anything you do expect a level of quality and service and especially if you've had it before and I think a lot of people that are doing Disney right now are either doing it for the first time and they're focusing on their next trip or if you've done Disney in the past, however long ago, you're forever comparing it like pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, and they're still changing things all the time. We've even had Bob Chapek to Bob Iger back and 
with these changes we're seeing things move around and Disney are slowly reshuffling and making the experience um, better each week, each month, each year. So I am trying to be critical in a fair way and I think that Benj and I did that in the vlog so you'll see there were moments I when I was editing felt like I was mostly positive but there were moments that we shared or expressed that we thought that this was an area of improvement and so that's why I'm just going to sort of summarize those things so if you did watch the vlogs you'll know that we did find that the quality weirdly was varied up and down across the board and that comes into play for things like food we noticed that the chicken quality, for example, was just quite poor when we ate at a quick service like Yak and Yeti in Animal Kingdom. Didn't taste the same, didn't look the same, just was not the same as what we'd had before. So something that we previously loved and looked forward to eating and recommended to you guys just wasn't up there. Uh, I'm not saying it was necessarily bad, I'm just trying to say that in comparison, <laughs> which is so hard because we're gonna constantly be comparing, but that's just the truth of the matter. I also noticed things like the toilet paper was like really poor quality, just not a pleasant, <laughs> No, I don't know how to describe that without getting too technical, but things, I just noticed things and like going to the bathrooms in the contemporary and all the soap dispensers were all broken and there were areas that I just felt like it was showing that the quality and level of service we receive is not quite there as well. Even down to like cast members didn't all seem as happy and positive as they have been in the past. I'd say that on previous trips, I never had a bad interaction, but on this trip, there were moments, especially on the Skyliner and things, where they just didn't seem as positive or excited. And I don't know if cast members are not being looked after in the same way, but we did notice it, is all I'm gonna say on that one. I thought Photo Pass really needs some love. I'm really sad to see them swap out things like meeting Mickey in the um, town square in Magic Kingdom. It's a massive meet and greet. He's in his beautiful 50th anniversary outfit right now. And they have an automatic camera that they've swapped out for an actual photo pass photographer. And I think that things like that, if you're a first timer going and you want that special magic photo and you've waited a long time to queue up, I think the experience on things like that was a shame. And generally photo pass photos across the board were not great. I'm gonna put some examples up on the screen so you can see, but I'm gonna show you the photo pass photographer version and then the iPhone version. And as you'll be able to see here, we constantly asked photo pass photographers if they'd take the photo again on a phone. So all of these were taken at the exact same moment, same spot, with, by the same person. And I don't know why the photo pass is coming out so poorly. Our feet were chopped, our, they were really dark, they were just really, really not good. And it just sort of made the experience just very odd when you were downloading your photos in a queue or you've waited ages and then you are lying on those photo pass photos especially as they do charge about two hundred dollars for a package and we got ours included in our um, hotel package but that kind of thing was just noticeable other than that i really missed having a dining plan uh, i think no dining plan right now is a shame but i'll talk about that a bit more later on and having to make park pass reservations who wants to do that like no one wants to have to organize their parks um to a t every single day and worry that they've made the wrong reservation and luckily i'm quite a planner and i made sure that i had everything in place for us so that we never had to worry if we had our park pass reservation or not but i can imagine that experience being really frustrating for new people doing Disney or if you like to be a bit more on a whim. I know they're sort of changing the rules on park hopping but right now you have to go to your park that you have your park pass reservation for and then you can park hop if you have a park hopper ticket after 2pm to any park and that will probably change I imagine but that's how it was for us and we didn't end up actually park hopping I thought this would be annoying for us having to wait till two but because we did the trip so leisurely so chill we ended up not really doing that and most days we just stuck to the park that we had put in the schedule and that worked fine for us but I just don't love the fact I even had to make park pass reservations in the first place I also wrote down that mousekeeping every four days wasn't ideal I didn't love that we didn't get our cleaning 
um, in our room every single day. When we first arrived, I really wasn't bothered about this, but then as the days got on and we did have mousekeeping, I realized how much I loved it and enjoyed coming back after a long park day. Um, to a nice clean room with the bed made and things so I think for me when I go on holiday that's something I personally like but you know you can live without it if they're doing it every four days but I think at this point I'm confused as to why it's still in place I don't really know why I feel like it should be back to daily but that's just my opinion in terms of pros We've got to have some balance, so let me give you the pros, because there were some really great things as well. And like I said, those cons are just like the things that I noticed the most. There were loads of loads of small bits here and there, but they're the ones that really sort of stood out to me. In terms of pros, I wrote down that I loved the Walt Disney World app. I thought it was brilliant. I loved so many features on it, including mobile order, merch checkout, buying and paying for the lightning lanes was easy for me. At first it took me a minute to get used to it, but I found the whole experience of using the app fairly smooth, downloading our photo passes, although they weren't all that good, <laughs> but it was, it was fine. I felt like we used the app a lot for lots of things and it was good, so I wrote that down as a pro. The shows were really high quality, so Fantasmic, um, Enchantment, Harmonious, um, and right down to the smaller shows as well, like the Finding Nemo show, Lion King, um, what other shows? The Bird Show and Animal Kingdom we loved. All the shows we saw, I would say there wasn't a bad one. They were all really good quality, especially things like the Nemo show. I honestly felt like it was like Broadway production level. Like those cast members gave it their all and I appreciated that. It was very good. We loved some of the lounges that we ate at, including Nomad Lounge and we did Space 220 Lounge. Really liked getting to grips with doing a lounge experience over a sit down bigger restaurant. Having smaller portions, sharing some sliders and a cocktail. Those were much more enjoyable for us. And I'm gonna talk about that a bit later when it comes to the food section of this video. Video, but did really think that the lounges were nice and I hope that they continue to expand on that for the people that don't want to do a big meal. I thought the merch was great, I bought some really nice things, I actually have done a whole haul video if you haven't seen that you can go and check out everything I bought including this lovely spirit jersey but not just that they had good merch, I thought that it was good quality, like we bought a really nice rucksack, the pins were all good. Um, and I also thought that the variety of merch was good. In comparison to when I went in May, there just seemed to be a lot more and it was being replenished a lot more, um, which made it really exciting for me as someone who loves buying Disney merch. I just really found it quite exciting that all the shops were having different things all the time. So I thought it was good. Virtual queue was really good on Guardians of the Galaxy. Still stand by that. I think it's a really good system and it works really well. I thought the crowd levels were good for the time of year we were there. The first week was good. I'm going to talk about crowds a bit more because that was a question, but generally it was a pro for us. Pop Century was amazing as a hotel. Again, I have a whole section on that, so hang fire. Skyliner is a 10 out of 10. And I thought Christmas was done so beautifully. All the decorations, all the effort they'd made, all the details, um, the, the characters in various Christmas things, you know, seeing Winnie the Pooh with a Christmas hat on, those little things really made a difference. Every time we walked into Magic Kingdom and saw those decorations, especially at night time, it was stunning, absolutely stunning. I think you'll agree that I'm fair in my pros and cons. They're very mixed across the board. Like I said, with all the trips we've been doing over the last year, there's been pros and cons for everything and they're just the things that I noticed the most. I'm just gonna continue with a few more of the generic questions and then we'll go into the smaller sections. So one of those questions was how were the crowd levels? So as I said, the crowds were really good. In the first week we were there, so the first week of December, I feel like we found this sweet spot and I almost feel like <laughs> I'm not gonna gatekeep that this is the time of year to go. Like I'm telling you, there seems to be this tiny window where after Thanksgiving and just before Christmas, our first week was nice. Like the crowds were super manageable, nothing felt too much. The second week, it definitely picked up and we had a day in Magic Kingdom where we just had to get out because it was just too much. Mostly though, crowds were great. Like it just didn't feel too much at all. In comparison to when I was there in May, my gosh, I remember walking around Epcot in May in the heat and it just felt like I was a sardine amongst so many crowds. I just didn't feel like that at all this trip. So that's good. Is there anything you'd wish you'd done but you didn't get the chance to do? 
Honestly, no. We managed to do everything that we set out to do. I would have liked maybe another opportunity to have gone to Disney Springs, as I think they have loads and loads of good food places there. But we did have a whole day there, so I think because this trip was shorter, we did it exactly how we wanted to and the time of year as well. But if we were going in the summer months, I do love a water park. Um, other than that, though, the only thing I would have loved to have done is Tron, which doesn't open till April, so <laughs> there we go. Let's move on to talking about Pop Century. So there were a few questions in about Pop. What did you like and dislike about Pop Century? So I really liked the Skyliner. I think it's a massive, massive perk, an absolute game changer, being able to get to Epcot and Hollywood Studios from your hotel via the Skyliner. It's just so much more enjoyable than the bus and I just really loved it. There were there was even a moment where we came back from the Contemporary Resort and we actually went via Epcot to get on the Skyliner back to the resort and I just thought it was brilliant. I also thought Pop was really good value for money, what we got. I loved the quick service, it was really good. We had um, a big pizza there for lunch one day. We used the resort mugs and filled those up. We thought the shop was nice. The staff were really friendly on the reception because we asked if they could move us from the 90s to the 80s. And uh, well, we asked if they could move us anywhere from the 90s because our room that was automatically assigned to us via the app was so far away. So we went to the reception, they were very kind and they moved us, which was really nice. Uh, I thought the grounds were nice, I thought the theming was nice, the pool was good, everything about the resort was pretty much like exactly what I wanted and this is going to be very controversial but I preferred it over Boardwalk which I think says a lot because Boardwalk is really luxe. I was lucky enough to stay there as part of a press group I did in May but I much preferred Pop Century, like having a quick service was a game changer, everywhere was really clean and friendly and nice so yeah I really loved Pop. Um, the only things I critiqued that was that the no daily housekeeping, but I'm assuming that will return. And I put, why are the towels so small? <laughs> They're just so small. Why? They don't fit around my body. And I'm like a UK size 16 to 18 and they didn't fit. So Disney, if you're listening, please, please put bigger towels in your hotels. Did the Skyliner ever have really long lines? No, it didn't. And I don't know whether that's the time of year, but all the vlogs that I had previously watched and seen, I'd prepared myself for these massive queues in the morning. On the very first day going to Hollywood Studios, there was a small queue that moved within five minutes. I don't think we really ever waited more than 10 minutes most for the, the Skyliner. It was very efficient. It moved really quick. We really didn't have to wait long at all. I was really expecting like 30, 40 minute waits for some nights, but no, it was good. What resorts would you like to stay at in the future? So some of you will know if you did watch the vlogs that we did quite a lot of resort hopping. So we did pop to quite a few different hotels this trip to see a lot of the Christmas decorations. Didn't do all of them, but we did do, you know, four or five. And I loved Animal Kingdom Lodge and Wilderness Lodge. Wilderness Lodge left us the most impressed. I still think I'd probably book Pop Century just because of the price. Like, of course, if I was doing like a big birthday or anniversary or a special occasion, we may spend a night or two there or, you know, you can rent out DVC points for those sort of um, uh, moderate and deluxe resorts. But for us, Pop just does the job. I just personally don't spend that much time in the resort. And if I do, I'm either asleep or we're running around doing something. Do you know what I mean? The rooms at Pop are so nice. They're so big and spacious and beautifully laid out. I would like to stay somewhere like Wilderness Lodge though, because like, why wouldn't you? It's stunning, absolutely stunning. There were a few questions around the time of year we went, uh, because previously we've only done September and October, and then I got the chance to go out in May last year, and I really didn't like May. If you're going at that time of year, just be really prepared for the heat and take more breaks and stop in the middle of the day, do um, a swim in your hotel or water park and just be prepared. But because I am pale and fair skinned and Benji's ginger as well, we just don't do well in that heat. And it was like 36 degrees when I was there. I knew that if we were gonna go back, I didn't want to go at that time of year. Looking for Christmas just made the most sense for us. I'd heard it was a nice time of year anyway. And I was actually prepared for it to be cold. So I packed a pair of jeans, I had a couple of hoodies, I was prepared for it to be chilly. And it ended up being 
incredible like exceeding all expectations we were so lucky i think it only rained we had a spot of rain at hollywood studios one night and then if you watch the vlogs you'll know we had an animal kingdom day where it chucked it with rain but other than that out of the 12 days it was beautiful blue sky it was like 25 to 27 degrees every day which is perfect for us i could have my hair down i didn't feel sweaty i think that's about 77 fahrenheit so it was just lovely like really really nice really enjoyed the time of year for the weather um, but also just the Christmas stuff was just so nice. I think Halloween and Christmas for me are the best times. Did you prefer doing 12 days instead of 14? I think I probably need to clarify the logic around um, why we did 12 and not the full 14 because in the UK, a lot of the package deals are for 14 nights and you get 14 um, days on your park ticket. In the past, we've usually flown out on a Saturday to the then two weeks later, Saturday to Saturday. And we've mostly done this because of holiday allowance and Benji's time off work and things. But this time we ended up choosing to do flying out on the Monday. Not only was the flight cheaper, um, but it was absolutely dead quiet. Like it was half empty, the plane. It was so nice. So we did that and I'm glad we did. Flat out on the Monday, the 5th of December. And then we flew home on the Friday and the reason I did this is because I just didn't think it was worth hanging around for an extra weekend with the crowd levels, the locals, people wanting to do the Christmas stuff. I just thought it was no point because, and I'm glad we did this because we definitely noticed it towards the end of the trip. It was starting to get busier and busier. Um, even if we'd done a Disney Springs day, it would have been absolutely heaving. So there was just no point in sticking around so that's why i ended up choosing to do 12 over 14 and because it was cold we didn't need the extra days to do water parks but in hindsight i think i would have used the extra days to have done more time at universal is the only thing i will say is in the future we'll definitely add universal more into our trip and the last question in time of year was would you recommend doing the christmas party and i think it's very very obvious if you watch the vlog but yes i loved the christmas party way more than i thought we had so much fun we did so many things we had that amazing character meet with winnie the pooh and his pals uh we had all the incredible fireworks and the shows and i had a great time it was amazing definitely one of the highlights for me the christmas party the next section is all about budgeting and spending costs so what payment do you use cash or card really interesting this came up quite a lot actually lots of people were confused about like how you buy and pay for things um but we typically put most stuff on our magic band which is connected to a card and then the payments come out each day it used to be at the end of your trip um, but I think they were having issues with um, people basically leaving without paying their final bill. So in the past, I've previously waited for a final payment. I'd get um, a list printed out from reception. But this trip, they take it at the end of the days. So it didn't really matter if I paid via Magic Band or my physical card. Uh, like they were doing the same thing, if that makes sense. So mostly we pay on a card. Both Benji and I use Monzo. We have other banks for our mortgage and bills and other things, but our general day to day, we have a joint account with Monzo. We love it. I have um, my own personal account with Monzo and it's just such a good card. I'm actually not 100% sure on the conversion rate and fees, but you can very clearly see it. So when you do a payment, Monzo tells you like how much that costs in dollars and then how much it's taking in pounds. Um, and it comes up as a notification on your phone once it's you paid, which is great. So we always use Monzo, but we always take cash because I personally like to tip in cash. We have added an extra tip on the bill when we sign it, when we do a sit down restaurant, and then they charge your card that amount. Like I forgot to bring cash when we went to Cheesecake Factory. So I just added it onto the final total when we paid the bill. If you're not sure how much to tip, Disney will give you some guidelines on like how much 18% is or 20% is, and then you can choose how much to tip. But we would always tip. I also tipped our Lyft drivers, uh, but you can do that within the app. So yeah, mostly card, um, but some cash too. Prices seem to have gone up a lot in recent years. Do you still think it's worth it money-wise? This is a good question. I think it comes down to what you deem is worth it. Like that's gonna be subjective to everyone. 
But my answer is probably going to be yes and no. Some things are worth it. Some things I think are really expensive for what they are. I think this mostly came down to food and I found a lot of the sit down meals to be just really expensive. Noticed things like in Space 220, it was $80 for the prefix menu per person. Then you're doing plus tax and tip on top of that. So you're looking over $100 easily per person by the time you pay for a drink as well. And for a sit down meal, somewhere like that, I just thought that was very expensive. Things like Ohana, I thought was very expensive. I think we paid $60 per person, then plus ticks and tip and tax ticks and tax <laughs> tip and tax but I did notice it with the food it did feel expensive and Benji noticed it as well um when we were eating around the world showcase and you know picking up things we ended up uh, basically sharing as well a lot of stuff and like I said doing those lounges but there are some things that are worth it others not as much and that is just sort of life everything is getting more expensive you know hard for me to fully answer that but I hope that sort of gives you a better idea how much was the Lyft or Uber from Disney to Universal and to Target so this question came off a lot a lot of you wanted to know how much it costs so we ended up using Lyft and obviously we went from Pop Century so depending on where your hotel is you may be another one further away but to give you an idea it cost us £23.80 on the way out from Pop to Universal and it cost us £20.99 on the way back later at night so obviously the prices varied because of what was coming up at the time and we also as I said always give a tip we spent just over $50 on our return journey to Universal Studios and it took around 20 minutes and then to Target I also got asked about which Target I liked we did two different ones uh, we did one near the Cheesecake Factory and the outlets where we had like an evening but the better one was the one we went to um, when we had a chilled morning and we did the one in Kissimmee and I wrote down for you the zip code for it. It's Kissimmee, it was 34747 and that was the one we went to and it cost us $12.90 there and then $12.90 back plus a tip. Somebody also asked if I regret not having a car and the answer is no. I think a car would have added a lot of extra stress and pressure on Benj uh, as he would have been the main driver and with tolls and you know f getting gas and uh parking costs i think they are actually changing parking costs for hotel resort guests but we would have had to pay parking every day and stuff like that it just wasn't worth it so maybe in the future especially if we're spending more time at universal but truthfully i just really like lyft had really good experience all the journeys we did were great and everyone was very nice a piece of merch you wish you'd bought but you didn't apart from a few pins that i saw there really wasn't anything that i felt i didn't get there was <laughs> It was an Olaf Christmas decoration I really liked, but Benji wasn't on board for that one. But other than that, no, honestly, I was very lucky. I bought some really nice things. And if you want to go and see all the merch, you can go and check out my haul. Um, but I also bought loads of lovely things in May too. So I really did have a year of lots of nice new Disney bits and it makes me so happy. The only thing I didn't find that I typically normally buy is a mug. And I didn't buy a new pair of ears. I felt like I'm a bit ears out for now. I've got plenty of ears, but I would have loved a new mug, especially like a Christmas mug. Walt Disney World Christmassy mug would have been lovely. Didn't find anything that I liked, which was a shame. Tips if you're on a budget. Okay, so I wrote down quite a few. So first one is you can order kids size meals. I don't know if there's any rules around it, but we did this. For example, I ordered a kid size portion on mobile order and then one adult size portion for Benj when we went to Chili Canteen and we had the cheeseburger pods, the bao buns. I only wanted one and some chips and a drink. I wasn't feeling like I needed more than that. So I just ordered a kid size. Um, so this might save you costs if you get the smaller one because portions are big. They are big and if you're going in sunnier months, you may find you lose your appetite and you're not as hungry if you're really hot. So portion sizes can be shared or kids sizes you can share meals as well so even Ben and I when we were at Steakhouse 71 we ordered our steak and then we shared a size of mac and cheese rather than getting one each which we typically do in the UK but because the portion sizes are so big you can share get a ton of drinks from Target we got loads of our Fanta's lemonade sprites we put them in the fridge in our hotel and we took them out for the day we got a really good bottle of water 
really good reusable bottle that kept the water cold and we would use the free ice water that, they, that you can get everywhere around Disney and the water fountains and in your hotel resort you'll have water free to fill up as well um, and we did that and um, really drank lots more water rather than spending a lot of money on extra drinks all the time. I see people buying five dollar sprites at the like popcorn carts all the time and I just think you can get like loads of them in Target, like a box or loads of t um, cans and stuff, which is what we did. For us, we didn't eat a lot of breakfast, but I did pick up some cereal bars. So if I was hungry for breakfast in the morning when I was getting ready in, in the hotel, I would just have a cereal bar. You can get some croissants or, you know, you don't need to um, eat all three of your meals out. I think a lot of vloggers and videos I watch, I feel this pressure and need to have to eat breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks in the parks and you don't have to. So we skipped a lot of breakfasts and ended up having bigger lunches and dinners instead and that worked really well for us and saved us some money. A big one is if you can get to Target early on in your trip, you can get plush and um, toys, like Disney stuff for kids out in Target, lots cheaper rather than getting in the parks. Um, but maybe make a list if there's any particular merchandise you're looking to buy. Don't feel pressure to use Genie Plus. I'm gonna to talk to you about that in a minute, but we didn't need or use it. I'm gonna to talk to you about that. What was the favorite thing you bought merch-wise? <laughs> my favorite thing was probably my Christmas Crocs. I love them and I don't wanna put them away. So guys, tell me, do I put them away and save them each Christmas or do I just keep them out all year round because they bring me joy? I think I know the answer, but I really love them. So my Christmas Crocs. The final question in this budgeting section was of course, how much was the total cost for the trip? I don't actually know the final exact figure, but in Monzo, you can put each thing, each item in Monzo into a category. So I did that for you, but that included all our lift and merch and food. So that's gonna be one category, but we'll, we'll go backwards. So. Hotel and tickets cost us £2,898 for two adults for 12 days at Pop Century with the 14-day tickets included for UK guests. The flights were £2,645. They were a lot cheaper, but I upgraded us to premium economy and I did feel like it was worth it. The Christmas party was £303 for us both. Cirque du Soleil was £283 for us both. Universal, that includes one day, two park hopper, with singular express passes was 534 pounds which is a very expensive day but that's per that's for us both so yeah about 250 quid each and then in terms of the extras so i categorized this in monzo and that includes our lifts our all the food and snacks and drinks and all the merchandise the target trips anything extra all the uh, individual lightning lanes we paid for which i'll talk about in a minute all in, we spent about two and a half thousand while we were out there on all of it. I mean, that is what it was. That is the figure. Um, this is, you might think it's completely mad, but I'm just being honest. So that brings us to a total of just over nine thousand pound for us both for Christmas for two weeks. I have previously done it for a lot, lot cheaper, and this trip wasn't like on a tight budget. You can stay at the All Star Resort, still have a great time for a lot cheaper. You don't have to fly in premium, obviously. Time of year massively factors that. If you're not doing a party, then, you know, those things we did pay extra for. It was our first time back in four years and it will be our last time back for a little while as well as we are getting ready to um, get married next year. And so we're not planning another Walt Disney World trip for a while. We're not the kind of people that go as much as some of my other fellow vlogger friends. We don't have DVC, we don't have annual passes. So our trip very much is go hard or go home because we only do it once every so often i just so happen to be very kindly invited out and had a very spontaneous press trip last year which i obviously didn't pay for but typically benj and i wouldn't do disney more frequently than every two to three years it's hard to know if i think it's worth that price because i do think nine thousand pound all in for us both is expensive like it is very expensive and i can't imagine how much it would cost if you had kids my gosh that is how much it costs and i'll leave the opinion up to you i'm going to try and whiz through the food section i could honestly do you a whole episode on food but how easy was it to get dining reservations and the answer is fairly straightforward when you know i have made a whole video on dining so i will leave that linked below for you i've covered everything in terms of reservations and tips and how to get 
the best ones and how to snag them and sort of that kind of thing. So definitely check out that video because otherwise I'll be repeating myself. Best quick service restaurants. Magic Kingdom, we like Columbia Harbour House. The food there is not like anything wowy, especially since they got rid of the chicken pot pie. But I really enjoyed my meal. We had some salmon and rice and veg and Benji had a burger, it was nice. I love sitting upstairs, it's nice and quiet, people watching, love it. Animal Kingdom, I think Satouli Canteen is my favorite. Didn't love the cheeseburger pods in May, but they massively changed them and improved them by December. We went there twice? Do we have cheeseburger pods twice? Hollywood Studios, I really like Backlot Express. I think it has the best variety and you can mobile order really easily and the food was really nice. And in Epcot, we typically eat around the world showcase because we've either been in food and wine or this time we were there for festival of the holidays. So we like to eat around the world. So we don't have a quick service we like at Epcot. Favorite and least favorite meals. <laughs> My favourites were Homecoming in Disney Springs. This meal was so tasty, which was a meal that we shared, by the way, if you saw that. We shared the main and we got some sides. Topolino's Terrace for breakfast. The character breakfast here was so good. Really nice experience, good quality, good character meats, all around 10 out of 10. Topolino's Terrace is in the Riviera Resort. Steakhouse 71 was a really nice surprise. We um, ate there for dinner our last night, and this is in the Contemporary Resort. And we had a really good quality steak and the lovely potatoes, and we shared the mac and cheese. And this was, I think Benji rated this his highest, like 9.4 or something. So I really loved Steakhouse 71. And we also really loved Tepanido. This was one of our first sit down meals. And I love the experience of them cooking in front of you. This is in the uh, Japanese pavilion at Epcot. Really good quality, lovely meal. Loved the interactions with the, with the chef. It was just delicious and I will do it again. My least favourite was the quick service meal we had at Yak and Yeti, which I've already talked about with the quality of the chicken. And I thought Ohana was really overrated and expensive for what it was. It's been very overhyped. I don't know if it's just not quite the same as what it was before, but for me, I just, it was a one and done. Like we did it, we ticked it off our list. The food was good. We had a good experience. I just wasn't what I expected. I think I'd put it, <laughs> I'd ranked it so high in my head. I had really high expectations because of the hype around it. And it was so hard to get a reservation. Um, I just didn't think it was all that. Favorite snacks. Okay, I'm gonna whiz through these because there's so many, okay? And I could talk about food and snacks all day because Disney snacks are just so nice. As you all know, I love a Rice Krispie treat. That's a classic. I love the pineapple lumpia that you can get from Pongu Pongu in the Pandora, the world of Avatar and Animal Kingdom. It's like this cream cheese pineapple pastry thing, I love it. The caramel butter bar was such a nice snack surprise. Got that from the Contemporary Resort in their cabinet, but you can buy it in the Germany Pavilion. It's like a little square shortbread caramelly thing. Oh, so nice. The frozen mango rum Minute Maid lemonade that we got from the frozen Coke stand outside of the bird show in Animal Kingdom. Both of us thought that was so delicious, especially on a hot day. Cheeseburger spring rolls from the spring roll cart outside Adventureland in Magic Kingdom. They're amazing. The brioche ice cream sandwich from Epcot in the French Pavilion. Um, Le Artisan de Glace. It's such a nice brioche bun, warm. They press with the ice cream inside and you can pick your flavors. It's great. Gideon's cookies from Gideon's Bakehouse in Disney Springs. Absolutely amazing. And the cold brew coffee there was so good as well. And I really like the Ronto wraps in Hollywood Studios in um, Galaxy's Edge. They do breakfast and lunch ones. I really liked the breakfast with the sausage and the egg, but Ronto wraps in general are just great. Great snack, great breakfast. So they were my top snacks. <laughs> I also did throw in extra special love for the frozen hot chocolate martini and the peppermint chocolate shake both from Epcot Festival of the Holidays. So you can't get those all year round, but they were holiday exclusive and I love them both. Having done Walt Disney World with and without a dining plan, what do you think is the best option? This is a quick answer for me, easily a dining plan. If you don't know the dining plan, previously it would depend on if you stayed at a value, uh, moderate or deluxe, and you got a certain amount of dining credits. And for me, having your credits and being able to spend those in the park and managing your food and budget that way it was just a game changer and I really hope they bring it back. Can you get into the park early with a breakfast reservation as a non-site guest? Yes, you can. If you Anyone can book dining reservations at the 60-day mark. Again, go watch my dining video, but you can get a breakfast reservation 
and get into park early if you book Crystal Palace in Magic Kingdom, which is Winnie the Pooh and Friends, nice little buffet, and Tusker House at Animal Kingdom, which is one of my favourite character meals, by the way, for breakfast. Uh, if you get an early reservation, you can get into the parks earlier, which means you can get those photos by the Tree of Life or the castle with no one in them, which is such a good tip. What restaurants are still on your bucket list? <laughs> I still want to do California Grill, which is at the top floor of the Contemporary Resort. Uh, Garden Grill, which is a character meal um, in Epcot. And I've heard that Topolino's Terrace is amazing for dinner as well, so that would be on my list. And I would do a late meal, hopefully be able to see the fireworks from the view up there. I think that would be stunning. One of the most asked things I did get was around Genie Plus. And I'm gonna keep this really brief because we didn't use Genie Plus. We did pay for individual lightning lanes, but we just found we didn't need Genie Plus. In the first week, those crowds were low. We utilized Magic Kingdom on a party day. It was so quiet, like five minute wait for Splash Mountain on our last day. Like we didn't need Genie Plus. The first week was just really quiet and we utilized being able to go into Hollywood Studios on the first day with our extra magic hour or half an hour extra magic time um, and we did uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. We waited at most like 40 or 50 minutes for bigger rides but we didn't mind. We played lots of games. We love Hangman. Benji has the worst little cheap Hangman app that we play and we do I Spy and we talk about our next plans and I don't know I, I like I edit a lot of my content in the queues we just didn't mind it was really we didn't have to wait that long for a lot of the rides so we didn't feel we needed Genie Plus there were some things like Benji really wanted to do Buzz Lightyear we just didn't get the chance but we can do that one in Disneyland Paris and they are the same so yeah we just decided that we weren't going to do them all but we did pay for individual lightning lanes I hate having to do this but I hate to say it, it is really good being able to pay and know you're going on that ride at that time like on the day we did Guardians Epcot I booked us in for like 12 o'clock I did also book us in for the virtual queue as well but those rides cost around $15 per person plus tax and I think for me when we were already spending that on those individual lightning lanes I just couldn't really fully justify them needing to like try and do loads and loads of rides and Benji and I just didn't want our trip to be that way. So that's why we didn't end up using Genie Plus. I can't really talk to you about it, but I did do a little bit of research for you. And my lovely, lovely Molly at the Mammoth Club, I met her very briefly in Disney Springs, but she has a fantastic video explaining it, showing you how to use it, and you can book one and then you can edit it and refresh. So I'm just not the best person to sort of be that, um, genie plus guru i guess but molly has covered it all in this video that i'm going to leave linked below for you quick fire round of some questions that are got that also came in so can you still park hop i think i answered this already but yes you can if it's after two o'clock but i believe they're changing it so just double check on this because i think they're moving things around are magic bands waterproof that came in yes they are they're waterproof um i don't know about magic band plus actually because that one you charge it up but i'm assuming so because you wear them on water rides and at water parks and things but yes they are notice you didn't do water parks this trip was there a reason for this we didn't because we had less time and the weather just wasn't there it was warm but it wasn't like Hot, too hot that we needed a water park um so we just didn't bother we did debate it on the day that we chose to have a leisurely morning but uh we just didn't think it was necessarily like hot enough it was the time of year mostly would you ever stay off site yes i would if i found us the right hotel the right deal the right villa whatever that case is then yes i would look at other options but personally we just love staying on property how far in advance should i book park pass reservations i would say do it as soon as you can um i really hope they scrap park pass reservations but as soon as you have an idea of when you want to go book them because you can edit them really easily so i just make sure if you've got them in then you've got them in i would hate for you to like book your trip and then they sell out or run out of park passes like that would be horrendous so just book them in as early as you can what's the best time of year to go to disney world in your opinion christmas christmas was the best favorite rides uh, my favorite ride is everest but i also really love flight of passage guardians of the galaxy big thunder mountain is one of my like og favorites favorite park is animal kingdom favorite character to meet my actual favourite character meet we did was the Winnie the Pooh one at the Christmas party. But I also really loved meeting Donald at Topolino's Terrace. I thought he was hilarious. And Daisy. Daisy was really cute too. 
and I always love meeting Mickey. I feel like meeting Mickey and Minnie is an absolute must. And one of my very favourite meets is actually Mickey and Minnie in Animal Kingdom. We didn't do it this time because we have done it before, but you can meet them together in their safari gear in Animal Kingdom. It's such a good meet. What items are a must have in your park bag? Okay, I wrote this down. So, <laughs> portable phone charger, mini fan, water bottle, Minnie Mouse ear holder, which I buy, well, I bought my one from Etsy from a seller. They sell loads similar. Reusable straws. Nothing worse than paper straws, ugh. Dollars and your ID if you're drinking alcohol and a photo of your passport, that's what they check. My beauty bag, which has antibac, paracetamol, uh, blister plasters, wet wipes, tissues, lip balm, sun cream, a mini hairbrush and hairbands, things like that. So they're all my must haves. I also would pack a pair of flip flops if I'm doing a long part day and I wanna change out my trainers, a pair of ears, magic band. But yeah, portable charge for the phone, definitely. The camera just died right at the end there. But the last question was, when are you going back? And we actually have Disneyland Paris booked for February. So we're going at the beginning of February. I'm really looking forward to that. Have that lovely magic again, be in that bubble. Disneyland Paris holds so many memories for me and I just love it there. I think they're doing such a good job right now. So later in the next few weeks and months, I'm gonna be covering Disneyland Paris. If you're interested in that, make sure you hit subscribe. But in terms of Walt Disney World, I don't know yet. I really wanna do Tron so badly, but I'll have to be patient and just wait and see because we are getting married abroad next year in 2024. And Disney's a big trip and it's expensive and we are obviously working on that trip next so I don't know I'd love to do other things this year and see other places and I've got a bucket list of Benj of places that we want to go to but we'll see how things go I don't know maybe we'll do things really differently and um do Universal for longer like I said and maybe we stay in a um different hotel I don't I don't know I'm not quite decided but it will definitely be within you know the next few years at least um possibly end of 2024, maybe 2025, I'm not 100% sure. It's hard for me to sort of answer because I can be easily swayed with a deal and if they bring back the dining plan, then we'll, then we'll be talking. If you got to the end of this video, thank you so, so much. I really appreciate you watching. I really have to run now, but I've loved chatting all things Disney. I hope this has given you all the information and tips and advice that you need. But of course, if there's anything else you want me to cover, just leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe so you don't miss future Disney vlogs and I'll see you again in the next ones. Bye.